Box model is one of the most important concepts in CSS, but sometimes people overlook it. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at box model, how to work with margin, padding, and border, and what are the differences between inline element and block element when it comes to box models. And next, we will find out when the margin collapse and how to align item using auto margin. And lastly, what is the alternative box model? And we're going to learn this by solving four tasks. If you want to go along, be sure to check out the description to download the resources. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's get started. If you download and open the resource, you will find two files, index.html and style.css. In the index.html, you could find a div with an A element inside it. And in the style.css, you could find in total four tasks according to the four topics that we're going to cover in this video. And you also notice here that I'm using live server so that whenever we change something, the page will be reloaded. So if we're ready, let's get started with the first task. For the first task, we need to give the button four pixel border with solid style and then this color. So we go over here and say border style. And you can see that we can choose different border style. So for example, what if we choose dotted? And if we save that, you can see that we have the dotted style border here. So let's delete this and press command space. And what about we choose double? You can see that now we have different border style. But for the task, we want it to be solid. So let's set solid here. All right. You also notice here that the color of the border is the same color of the text color. But what if I want to set the color to be red? We can go over here and say border color, say red. If we save that, the border now is red. But for the assignment, we want to have this color. So let's copy and paste it here. And in the task, we also need to set the border width to be 4 pixel. So in here, we can say border width 4 pixel. And now we solve the task, but we just wrote three lines of code just for the border. So we can use the shorthand syntax by saying here border. First, we're going to give the border style, which is the solid, and then the width, which is 4 pixel, and then the color, which is this one. So now if we delete the old style and save it, it's still going to work the same way. But because the color of the border is the same with the text color, so we don't need this. And one more thing about the border is that we can choose weak border to set the style. So for example, I want to uh, set the border uh, right color to be red, for example. You can see here that only the border right color has changed. All right, you can set the border left or border bottom. It's up to you. But this is not the task, so let's delete this. And in the task number one, we also need to give the button padding left and right of 8 pixel. So let's do so by saying here padding left 8 pixel and padding right also 8 pixel. And we also need to give it padding top and bottom of 12 pixel. So let's do here padding top 12 pixel and padding uh, bottom 12 pixel. Now you see that between the content and the border, there is 12 pixel over here and here and 8 pixel here and here. All right. But I don't want to write four lines of code to just set the padding. So again, we can use the shorthand syntax by just saying here padding. First, we're going to give the padding top, which is 12 pixel. And then we're going to go clockwise to set the padding right which is 8 pixel, and then padding bottom, which is 12 pixel, and then padding left, which is 8 pixel. So now if we delete this and save it again, it's still going to work the same way. And one thing you notice here that this is duplication. So if the uh, right and the left padding has the same value, we don't need to have the left value anymore. And if also the top and the bottom have the same value, we don't need the bottom value anymore. So 
if we save this again, it's still going to work the same way. In the test number one, we also need to set the margin. So using the same trick with padding, in here we can say margin. Top and bottom would be 16 pixel. And then left and right would be 12 pixel. And if we save this, you can see that there is some space over here and here, but we cannot see any space on top or on the bottom. So one way to make sure if we did everything correctly, we can open the inspector. And in the style tab, let's go down on the bottom. And if we select the A element, you can see that there is margin top and bottom of 16 pixel and left and right of 12 pixel, but it does not apply to the button. So to know why it works this way, let's move on to the task number two. For the task number two, we need to fix the overlapping issues while still keeping the element in line. So if you look over here, you can see that the text and the button now are overlapping each other. And to fix this, it is quite easy. All we have to do is say display equal to block. And if we do this, now the A element is a block element, which means that it's going to take a new line. And the width is all the space available. You also notice that now the vertical padding, border and margin are actually push at the element away. So if we delete this, by default, A element is inline element, which means that it does not take a new line. And the vertical padding, border and margin would not push other element away. So let's change it to be block. And in the task, it also say that we need to keep the element in line. So to do this, instead of setting display to be block, we can set it to be inline block. And by doing this, the element would be block element, but it does not break in a new line. So that concludes the task number two. Let's move on to the task number three. For the task number three, First, we need to add another button right after the first one and give them block display fit content width and observe the margin. So first, let's go to the index.html and let's copy this and paste it here. And if we save that, now we have two buttons. And let's go to style.css again. It says here that we need to uh, give the display to be block. So let's delete this and then width to be fit content. And if we save that now, you can see that now we have two buttons in two separate rows. And now we can look at the margin. Each button has margin top and bottom of 16 pixel. And now you would guess that this space would be 32 pixel, although you would be good at math, but you would be wrong. And if we inspect it, you can see here that if we select the button, the margin now collapse, which means that this space is just 16 pixel. So what if we set this to be inline block? Does this happen? And if we open the inspector again, you can see now that uh, it does not collapsing. So margin collapsing only happen for top and bottom margin, and it does not happen to the left and right margin. So let's change it back to the block display. And what if we select the first button and then give it margin, let's say bottom to be 50 pixel. And if we open the inspector again, you can see that the space between the two buttons is now 50 pixel, which is the margin of the first button. So you can see that margin collapsing would take the bigger value. All right, in the task number three, we also need to align the first button in the middle of the row and the second button at the end of the row. So let's go over here. We already have the first button selected. So let's delete this. What if we say here margin left to be outer? If we save this, you can see now the button is aligned at the end of the row, which means that it has the margin left equal to outer, so it's expand as much 
as you can. So now if we also set the margin right to be L2, you can see that now the button is in the center. And that's for the first button. And now we know how to align the button in the center. And to complete the task, we just need to move this up here. Now, if we save that, you can see that the second button is now aligned at the end of the row because it has the margin left equal to L2. And the first button is aligned at the middle because it has both margin left and margin right equal to L2. And one thing I want to show you about the margin L2, let's say what if we add a new div with a class of container here, and then we're going to put the second button inside. In the CSS, let's select the container and let's give it some height, let's say uh, 200 pixel. And then let's also give it some border, let's say solid border. And then if we now uh, set the margin to be auto, and then we give the container to be display equal to be flex. And if we see that, now the button is in the center of the container because now the top bottom left and right margin is now out to. All right, so that's how you use margin out to to align item. And let's move on to the last task. For the last task, we're not going to care about the container. So let's remove this. And for the task number four, we need to change the CSS so that the buttons have width of 120 pixel. So you might think that we just need to set the width to be 112 pixel. And then it's going to have the width of 112 pixel, which is wrong. Now, if we open the inspector, you can see here that the width of the content is 120 pixel, but the actual width of the button is equal to 120 plus 8 plus 8 plus 4 and plus 4. And in order to have the width of the button equal to uh, 120, we have to do some math and set the width equal to 96, which is a lot of work. So we can set back here to be 20 pixel and we can use the alternative box model and we can do so by saying here box sizing border box and let's say that if we open the inspector again you can see here that the width of the content is now 96 and by setting box sizing to be border box the width now include border padding and the content we don't need to do any calculation anymore this is also the reason why many developers set box sizing equal to border box to every element. All right, so that's it for the full task. Let's summarize what we have learned. We learned that we can customize border padding and margin using the according property. And we also learned that in inline element, vertical border padding and margin will not push other elements away Whereas in block element, vertical border padding and margin will be applied and they will push other element away. We also learned that sometimes vertical margin collapse and we can use auto margin to align item. And lastly, we learned that we can use the alternative box model by setting box sizing to be border box. All right, so that's it for the video. If you enjoy it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out devchanges.io for more tutorials. Otherwise, happy coding and see you in the next video. Bye.